Greetings, greetings, greetings to everyone. Nikki Brown here, no matter where you are and no matter what part of the world you're in, I hope that you're having a delightful day. This is for your heart chakra, sending loving energy to your heart at this time. So today I want to talk about trauma bonds, right? Um, a lot of times we meet people and we have what we think is a connection or chemistry um, when really it's just an attraction and often that attraction is just lust right so when we're attracted to somebody a lot of times we think that we're supposed to pursue that attraction but I ask this question what if the person that you met and are attracted to was meant to just be your business partner and you're meant to become millionaires together but you can never sleep together a lot of times people don't take the time to figure out how a person is supposed to show up in their life because some people come into our life for a lesson and some of the most attractive people will teach us the biggest lesson right sometimes people come into our lives for a season a reason sometimes we try to turn lifetime people into seasonal people and seasonal people into lifetime people <clears throat> I even say have said this you know to a guy like you know okay you like big booties or whatever but what if the woman that you're meant to be with is flat chested and has a small butt right again a lot of times we don't take the time to figure out and get to know who a person is and how they're supposed to show up in our life right and so then we we have connections or similarities Oh, my mom was like this. My dad was like that. This happened to me. That happened to me. I had this experience. I had that experience. And we see that as a chemistry or a connection or um, like attracts like. But sometimes it's trauma bonds. So if you grew up and your dad was abusive or alcoholic and you meet someone whose uh, dad was also abusive and an alcoholic, that's not necessarily saying that you should be together you're now having a trauma bond and maybe you had to learn from that person but then you end up getting married and or having children and so you're tied to one another <clears throat> and you have a soul tie with one another but again that doesn't mean that you were necessarily meant to be together in the first place right you now have this trauma bond with this person and sometimes it ends up being a very toxic relationship that should have never progressed beyond the lesson that you were supposed to learn when you first met one another and we don't often pay attention to those red flags and non-negotiable behaviors nowadays when I meet someone um, and I see that there's just something's just not quite meshing I go and distance myself sooner than later right just because you're attracted to someone does not mean you have to be together. <laughs> that It doesn't mean that. Sometimes people come into your life to test you, to see whether or not you will go back down the same road you've been down before. It may look like a, pers a different person, but a lot of times it's that same person in another body. Because it's that same personality, it's the same trauma. And so they show up to say, oh, are you going to fall for it again? Right? The big butt and the smile, the handsome face, the muscles, whatever it is. Are you going to fall for that again? Based on attraction. Right? Or are you going to acknowledge that, no, this is not quite right. This is the same personality type that I dated the last time and the time before that or 10 years ago or five years ago or whatever that looks like. <clears throat> or are you going to say, mm, no, this one isn't right? Are you willing to wait and be patient for the one who is right? Someone said to me yesterday, oh, well, uh, I, I created a post about being honest, right? If you just want to have sex with somebody, just say that. If you just want to 
um, talk to that person because you're going through a hardship in the relationship that you're in, just say that. And it said a couple other things. And someone said to me, well, that's just not realistic. It is. You, how can you tell somebody? I hear a lot of people, especially men, say that women don't want to know the truth. You can't say that. When you first meet somebody, if you put it out there on the table and say what it is, you don't know what their response is going to be. You can't judge for them. You can't make that assumption for them. You can't make that decision for them. Because if you do, then that makes it worse on the other side. When they hear the truth after the fact. But if you tell the truth in the beginning, then the person knows, okay, this is what I'm getting myself into. Whether you say, I'm in a relationship, I live with somebody, I'm married, you know, me and my boyfriend or girlfriend just woke up and I just want somebody to talk to right now. I just want to have sex with somebody. Whatever it is, why can't you say that from the beginning when you meet someone? I don't want to be in a relationship. I just want to be your friend. I just want to have sex with you. What is hard about that? Now, I'm not saying that as soon as you meet the person, oh, yeah, I just want to screw. I'm not saying that you should say that. I still feel that you should get to know the person. Because if you get to know the person, you may not even want to do that. Because there is a such thing as soul ties, right? And you cannot wash those off. And a lot of times you're sleeping with people who have such bad energy and then the next thing you know you have that same that bad energy and you're wondering why because you, uh, things have attached to you. Spirits and negative energy has attached to you. And again, you cannot wash that off. I don't care what kind of soap you use. I don't care if it's internal or external organ. You cannot wash it off. It gets stuck to you. <clears throat> I remember somebody, and I considered him to be pretty mature, and he connected with someone who I considered to be very immature. And the next thing you know, he was being just as immature as she was. These things happen. And when you're on the inside, you don't realize that, you know, that you've taken on this person's personality. And this was a guy who took on the woman's personality. He was in my age range, which is uh, late 40s. And she was in her 30s, mid 30s. So these things happen. And again, it's a trauma bond. It's a trauma response. Because you feel like you can connect in certain ways or because this person is just willing to do it. <laughs> but there are some people who are not willing to do it. Everyone's not the same. But at the same time, there are plenty of people who just want to have sex, right? They don't want to be in a relationship. And so they're willing to get down with you. And that's okay. Okay. But forcing someone into it by not telling them the truth is not okay. It's not okay. I'm sure this applies to many other people in other places. But here in Atlanta, there's a, a large group of people who... Um, they live with somebody or they're married or they're already in a relationship or they're on the down low. And they want to just, you know, not share that information. And that's not right. Well, they'll, they'll try to beat around the bush and make it seem like, you know, everything's okay. And even make the comment like, oh, well, everybody has somebody. But that's not true. Everybody's not the same. <laughs> Yes, we live in a very hypersexual society, and a large majority of the people do operate very similarly. And people are like, oh, well, if you're talking to somebody on the phone, but some people are not talking to anyone on the phone. Some people are not going out on dates. Some people are not lusting with somebody on social media. 
messaging back and forth. Some people are focused on themselves. Some people are focused on their money or their bag, as, as people say. <clears throat> and they're focused on improving themselves, whether that be, be financially, personally, mentally, spiritually, or whatever that looks like for each individual person. So they're not out here just, you know, being deceptive or dishonest about not being in a relationship. Some people are genuinely not in a relationship of any kind. I hear a lot of people say, oh, you need to focus, you need to, you need to start dating. How come you don't, you're not in a relationship? How come it? Again, and it's not everybody, because there are some genuine people out there, and there are some honest people out there, but some people who have attachments, right? They have attachments. Um, they have uh, some healing to do, right? Some mental and emotional healing to do. Um... One of the biggest things is someone who keeps their word. And I know that things come up sometimes, but the worst thing you could, you could do is not acknowledge the fact that you didn't keep your word. Right? Some people say, oh, it's not a big deal. And the most popular thing that people say is nobody's perfect. As if it's about being perfect. This is a deflection. Right? Because people don't want to take accountability and responsibility for their actions. So the first thing out their mouth is, oh, nobody's perfect. No one ever said anything about perfection or being perfect. <clears throat> and I was reading yesterday, um, one of the traits of a narcissist is perfectionism. Right? So sometimes people think they have to be perfect or they need to do things perfectly. This is a this is a trauma response, right? A lot of times this comes from our childhood. This comes from parents who um, made us feel like nothing we did was good enough, right? You can clean up your room spick and span as they say and they still find something. Oh, there's dust. There's a piece of paper on the floor. There's some, they never, you know, acknowledge, oh, you did a good job, you know, um, that was great, or whatever the case may be, and it's because no one probably ever did it for them, and say so they don't know how to do that, right, but, you know, we all know that everyone has a different lo love language, some people need quality time, some people need words of affirmation, some people need touch, some people need gifts, and, um, the fifth one is, um, acts of service right so some people need you to do something for them but some people need those words of affirmation so to be encouraging so if someone needs encouragement and support verbally and you give them a gift it's not that they don't appreciate the gift but that does not satisfy them mentally emotionally or spiritually and so they still want to grow up with that lack that void like even if both parents are physically present, if they're mentally and emotionally absent, this effect can still be the same. Because they were not given that love and nurturing that they need to become a balanced adult. And so this is one of the things that's going on. A lot of people are completely out of balance. We're supposed to have a balance of masculine and feminine energy. We're not supposed to be too emotional, male or female. And a lot of people don't acknowledge in men, anger is an emotion. I met someone recently who's very angry and he takes things out of context. 
And then he lashes out because he does not have that comprehension or understanding, right? And he blames everybody else, but at the same time, it, to a certain extent, does acknowledge it. And is working on getting help, but at the same time, you still have this disconnect. And the, but the common denominator is that person. Right? So, <clears throat> a lot of times, it's people who grew up with a parent being absent. But not always. Because again, there are a whole lot of parents who felt like all they had to do was go to work. And so again, they did not give the child or the children the nurturing they needed to be healthy adults. And so now these unhealthy adults are attempting to have relationships with other people, not realizing how they're showing up in the world. Not realizing you can be yourself and you can be honest and it is okay. There's a couple who, I don't, I think they were married for about, I don't know how long they've been married. Anyhow, when they first started seeing each other, he told her, they had their little pillow talk, and he told her he is bisexual. And she said, okay. And eventually, at some point during their marriage, because they have a child who's probably like four or five years old. So let's say they've been married 10 years. That was the first thing that came into my mind anyway. Right, so let's say they've been married 10 years and then after that time period they decide to introduce another gentleman into their marriage right so now they all live together they're all raising the child together and it works for them right they you know she's with both men and the both men you know are with one another when they want to be and that works for them and so you cannot say that somebody's not going to be accepting if you don't give them a chance to accept, if you don't tell them your truth. You have to tell your truth. It's your truth. And if this is how you feel that you want to show up in the world, then show up in the world in that way. You can't, you can't deter, you can't, again, you can't determine for somebody um, what this is supposed to look like. You have to allow people to decide for themselves. Just be honest. You never know what it's going to get you or how it's going to work out. You can't know until you're willing to give it a chance. Don't just say it's not realistic because of the response somebody else gave you 10, 20 years ago. Or even yesterday. Everybody's different. Some people are very open-minded. I know another guy. He, when he first met his wife, he said, I cannot see myself only sleeping with one woman for the rest of my life. And guess what she said? She said, okay. <laughs> because he said it when they first met one another. This is the thing. You can't wait until it's been months. Right? You have to say it in the beginning. Again, it doesn't have to be that first initial conversation or the first date. But somewhere within a very short window of time, when you first meet somebody, Say maybe after the second or third conversation. Because you have to determine whether or not you even like this person. Right? Because if you determine after the first conversation that you don't like this person, you don't have to even bother. But if you've had two, three conversations and you feel like you're vibing, be honest. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. I don't know if that may change. 
but for right now this is what I want now of course you're gonna have people who feel like they can change your mind or they can change you that's their problem you still told the truth right you still told the truth and that's what we're talking about telling the truth speaking your truth All right, y'all, as always, I love y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Mwah.